since I built my Hackintosh about 8 or so months ago, I've had people asking me if I've dual booted with Windows. Now, when I first got my Hackintosh, I did. However, over time, I found um, OS X equivalent applications for Windows apps that I needed. So honestly, um, for the past 2 or 3 months, I haven't even had Windows 7 installed. Um, any version of Windows, like it's just been OS X. And if you saw in my last video when I showed you how to install Snow Leopard, all I had was Lion and Snow Leopard. I, there was no Windows on my system other than Parallels desktop. I do have Windows 7 installed via Parallels, so um, but that doesn't require me to reboot and have an actual Windows partition. So why would you want this? Basically, if you have an application like, let's say, like Premiere Pro or something that you use for uh, video editing, if you try to run that through Parallels, you will not unlock your system's full potential. You know, it's great for just little apps, maybe maybe like a video converter, I'd say, is probably the most intensive thing that you'd want to do with your Parallels. So if you want to, um, you know, play games, like full res games and stuff, 3D games, stuff like that, if you want to um, do a, have like a video editor, then you do want a designated Windows partition. Like I said, I have found OS X equivalents for all these, and I have not had to have Windows installed. But a lot of people do, and a lot of people want to have OS X and Windows. And um, I have done it, like I said, in the past, so this video is going to be showing you guys exactly how to do that. So in order to do this, you're going to need a few things. First off, you're going to need a copy of Windows. Right here, I have Windows Vista. I do not have my Windows 7 disk with me right now, so I will be using Vista. This is a legitimate copy. I got it from MSDNAA through uh, Penn State, my college. So this is a perfectly legit copy of Windows. Just because it's burned does not mean that it is pirated. So you're also going to need the Chameleon bootloader. You may need a different bootloader based on your system. Like I always say, when it comes to doing Hackintosh stuff, you know, it all depends on your hardware. So make sure you just get a, a bootloader that is compatible with your system. You might have to do some research. You might have to try and fail a few times. But um, that's the whole fun of doing this kind of stuff, you know, just trial and error. So you're going to need Windows 7. You're going to need a bootloader. You might even be able to use your iBoot disk from last time, just something that will boot OS X on PC hardware. You're also going to need a USB mouse. PS2 mouse should work too, but I can't absolutely confirm that since I've never used one. And you're also going to need a USB, possibly PS2, keyboard. So uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and we'll get started. So the first thing you want to do is actually set up your hard drive for a place to put Windows. So in order to do that, we're going to need Disk Utility. So uh, I'm just going to go down to Applications, Utilities, and Disk Utility is right now. So from here, you want to click on your hard drive. And like I said in my other video, in my Hackintosh video, my previous video, please unplug any drive that you don't want to have anything deleted off of. In my case, I have a terabyte drive that has all my music, all my videos. If that gets deleted, that's um, basically a lot of stuff that I'd have to re-download. So that'd be a huge pain in the butt just you know, for the software to glitch or for me to make a stupid mistake. So just do yourself a favor. You might think that you know exactly what you're doing, that you'll never mess up, but trust me, it happens. I've done it once, and from, this, from that day on, every time I go to do something like this, I unplug it. Because if I lose all that stuff, it's going to take me a long time to get it back to where it all was. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to click this little plus button now, and that will create a new partition for us. As you can see, it's now right here. I'm going to, um, well first you want to have it as a MSDOS FAT, which is a standard FAT32 partition. From there you can name it whatever you like, I'll, I'll just name it Windows, and go ahead and hit apply and partition. Partition complete, so as you can see now it's on my desktop, obviously there's not going to be anything in there. So now what you want to do is you want to make sure you have your Windows disk in, as you can see, I do. And so from there, all you want to do is simply restart your machine. So as you guys can see, I am now restarting. I want to go ahead and boot into my uh, Windows Drive, or my Windows DVD rather. And from there, you just want to install it like you would a normal Windows installation. So I'm going to go to my boot devices. As you can see, CD-ROM It's exactly what we would like. And of course, you're going to get the classic press any key to boot from CD or DVD, whatever. Actually, I didn't get that. I'm surprised. But as you can see, it is now loading the Windows files. This usually takes around two minutes, so I guess I'll just go ahead and I'll skip right over this. So as you can see, this is now finishing up. We are almost there. And this has the same issues that OS X did with the screen being cut off. Not sure why that is, whether it's all, like, all monitors or just this monitor. On my other, my 19 inch over here, it's never had that problem, but of course, this is a greater resolution. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit next. I'll zoom in a little bit more on this for you guys. Windows Vista.
product key, I'm not even really going to worry about this because I'm not even going to really use this once this video is over. So if it doesn't, if it like needs to ask me for a product key later, I will. But I won't take the time now to type it in, especially if I'm not even going to be using it. Do you want to enter your product key now? No, I do not. And uh, this is business, so I'll go ahead and be in, I'll be installing business. I accept the license terms, custom. And like I said before, this is all just you know a very standard install of Windows. I mean, it's nothing very um, like I said earth shattering. So as you can see here, we have our Windows partition. We want to go to Drive Options and just click Format, and this will change the file system from FAT32 to NTFS, which is very Windows friendly, as you could say. And it's now done. So hit Next, and Windows is now installing. I assume this will take anywhere from 20 minutes to a half an hour. Windows 7 usually does take around 15-20 minutes, but this this disk does seem a little bit slower, it doesn't seem to install as fast, so I will be back when this is done. I figure that while I'm waiting for this, I'll just go ahead and kind of explain what we're going to be doing. So um, when Windows, when you install a version of Windows, what it does is that it not only installs its own bootloader, but it sets itself as a primary partition. So when that make, that means that when you first boot up your computer and when your uh, motherboard or whatever is looking for something to boot from, that's the first thing it picks up is that Windows partition, at least in terms of the hard drive. It's the first thing it picks up and instead of the OS X partition. So even though the OS X partition's number comes first on the hard drive, Windows tells it to boot Windows first. And so therefore you get the Windows bootloader which does not recognize OS X partitions. So what we're going to do is after this is done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to boot with that bootloader I mentioned earlier on this. This will allow me, this will come before the Windows bootloader. And since that will occur, I will then be able to boot my OS X partition. From OS X, we're going to uh, do some terminal commands that will tell the computer to now, instead of boot Windows first, to boot OS X first. And since we have the Chameleon bootloader on OS X, from the Chameleon bootloader, we can choose whether we want to boot from OS X or we want to boot from Windows. So that is what will give us the choice on startup for what we want to boot into. And that's what makes this kind of complicated where a lot of people don't know why that when they install Windows that you can't boot into OS X anymore. That's why. That's why we need this separate bootloader. Or in your, in your case, it might be the iBoot disk or just something that can boot OS X. So once this is done, we will be getting more into that. After about 10 minutes or so, I'm finally greeted with this. Please wait while Windows sets up your computer. I do realize that, you know, Windows 7, Windows XP, things will look a lot different. Uh, however, Windows uh, Windows Vista is just happens to be the only version I have on me right now. So, yeah. Okay, well, Windows Vista has installed, so now I'm just going to go out and I'm going to fill in my settings. That flower is beautiful. I will definitely be keeping that. Uh, that's fine. Ask me later. I don't even know why I'm bothering to change the time. But, you know, just whatever. And that's horribly wrong. But, whatever. Alright, I click start, but if I remember correctly, I'm still going to be sitting here for 5 or 10 minutes. Yep. Please wait while Windows checks your computer's performance. Getting it done just got more fun. I don't know why I just flickered. It might be doing something with my graphics drivers or something. But yeah, this probably will take five, five or so minutes, so I'll be back when this is done. Goody! Windows logo. Preparing my desktop. I obviously do not have graphics drivers. I wonder why. Now, whenever you try to get into like a PC and Mac debate, you know, people say that it has to cover more hardware and that, you know, stuff like that. That's why it's not as stable. But it still didn't even install my graphics drivers. I mean, this is a fairly common graphics card. Anyway, whatever. Windows is now installed. Windows is now usable. And that was the point. So as you can see here, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit operating system. This is Windows uh, Business Service Pack 1. Windows uh, Vista Business Service Pack 1. But so uh, putting that aside, now what I'm going to do is we're going to restart. And I'm going to put my bootloader on this flash drive. Obviously, my uh, PC is set to um, boot flash drives by def excuse me by default. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut down. And then this will boot from the flash drive, very NAS-like. And so, like I said earlier, what we're going to be doing now is booting back into OS X instead of Windows. Because the computer, without this bootloader, it's going to want to boot into Windows, and it will. By itself, it won't even ask you. It's just going to do it. 
And like I said, this time I will not be going into the um, boot options simply because my uh, motherboard is. I told my motherboard to search USB and then boot from a hard drive. So that's why. That's why when I want to boot from a CD, I have to go into the manual boot options because I don't find myself booting from a CD very often. So I just tell it to skip it all together, and that saves me a lot of boot time. But as you can see, it now booted off that flash drive, and uh, I now have Macintosh HD and Windows and TFS. Obviously, I'm going to want to boot into Macintosh HD. This won't be here for you. Um, this is how I installed Mac OS X Lion. Lion is on this drive, but I installed that bootloader to that uh, flash drive. So that's what this is. If I wanted to install Mac OS X Lion, I would do that. But um, since I'm simply just going to change the boot order of these, I will not be using this. Um, but I'll, I will put the link to this bootloader in the description. So from there, you can just install just the bootloader to this flash drive, and it'll work just fine. So Macintosh HD. This isn't going to look as pretty as a normal OS X installation because it's basically booting in verbose mode. So you, um, this is the stuff that goes on behind the scenes of that um, Apple boot screen. So this will take about as long as a normal um, normal boot time would though, so it's nothing to worry about. It might look kind of scary upon first glance, but don't worry about it. I mean, I know what probably like a hundredth of all this stuff actually means, so don't worry about it if you don't know what it means. It might say sometimes that you know something failed to load or something like that. Don't worry, it's all fine. That happens every time you boot, you just don't see it. So as you can see, OS 10 has now booted. I'm in OS 10, everything's running. All right, so Twitter has come up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna quit everything that I don't need right now. And so now what you want to do is you want to launch Terminal. So that will be located, and I'll try to zoom into this for you guys. So same thing, Terminal. Alright, I'm going to zoom in on this for you guys. You want to make sure that you have a password for your OS X account. So the first thing you want to do is type sudo-s. And then you want to type in that password. This gives you administrative privileges. You can't go around switching your boot priority without being without um, administrative privileges. So that's what we're doing. We're telling it that we have these privileges. I don't know why that doesn't really want to focus. I think that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get. So now what you want to do is you want to type disk util list. D I S K U T I L list. There's a space between those and hit enter. Now what this is. And I'll try to zoom into this on here. There we go. This is our drive now. This, uh, this is the one we're booted into. This is your Mac OS X drive. As you can see on your hard drive, it's called Disk Zero S2. This is the one that Windows is on right here. This Windows or this Microsoft Basic Data. And then, as you can see, this is Disk Zero S3. Disk the the first number here represents the physical hard drive, and the one two three represent the partitions on the drive. And um, obviously this one down here, this is the um, flash drive, and this is the optical drive. So what we want to do is you want to change it from booting this one to booting this one. So remember your um, OS X partition name that you want to have boot by default. Mine is disk 0 s 2 So from here what you want to do is you want to type f disk space dash u space dash uh, or forward slash dev forward slash r disk zero zero being this number here where's my mouse here right here this first number since mine is zero s two if yours was on another hard drive and it was disk one s three you type in a one there since it's on that hard drive but since this is the only hard drive I've plugged in most likely yours will start with a zero so just go ahead and type zero but like I said make sure you know what you're doing here now you'll get this. Do you wish to write new MBR? Yes, master boot record. Now what you want to do is very similar but yet different. F disk dash E, not dash U, space dash D E V dev slash R disk zero. Now you'll get something that looks a little bit like that. What you want to do now is type P and that will give you a little list here. What you want to do is type in, um, remember that disk 0 s 2, the number of your Mac OS 10 partition, you want to type F space and then that number. So for example, mine is going to be 2. 
So now partition 2 was marked as active instead of 3. W, type Y, and that's it. So what I like to do is I like to type exit. You're going to need to type it twice and then log out, if I can type that correctly. And that's all you have to do. So from here, you can now uh, restart your machine. And by default, this will boot into OS X. So we're now rebooted. I will get some more of that um, ugly looking stuff here. So now my machine has rebooted. My flash drive is now unplugged. There is no disk in the drive other than the Windows installation. And I will eject that as well just to prove that this is booting on its own. Here's Windows Vista. And as you can see, by default, it now boots OS X. And since Chameleon is on the OS X partition, it boots Chameleon instead of the Windows bootloader. So from here, this will boot OS X. As you can see, OS X is now booting. I will speed up this footage, so I, this video is probably going to be long as it is. Alright, so as you can see, we are now in OS X. Everything works great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot and prove to you guys that uh, Chameleon will now boot Windows. So as you can see, we're going to restart. So as you can see, it is now rebooting. Now the thing you're going to notice this time is that when it gets to the Chameleon bootloader, I'm going to hit a key. And I'll do that now. My camera decides to focus. And what that did is it got me to Macintosh HD and um, Windows. So by hitting a key it interrupts like the automatic boot and so then it lets you pick whichever one you want to inst uh, boot into. So instead of doing Macintosh HD like last time I will now instead do Windows NTFS. And much like you would imagine there it goes it's now booting into Windows. So that's pretty much it. I mean it's really not that hard. You do follow like just the standard Windows um, installation. The only difference really is getting the bootloader instead of to boot from the Windows drive is to get the, it to boot from the OS X drive. That's pretty much all that's different from installing regular Windows and a regular dual boot with Windows. So I guess if you guys have any questions, I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also check out at iTech City or iTech City and at iTech City on Twitter. I hope this guide was helpful for you guys. The next um, Hackintosh tutorial I'll be doing is going to be online, but that's probably not going to be for another month, maybe two. And that's going to be, like I said, how to install Lion on a Hackintosh, like to get it up and running. I have gotten the developer's preview up and running, but it's not, it's not quite the easiest process in the world, and it's kind of buggy right now, so that's why I'm just going to wait. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're a gamer or if you have any really intensive apps that only run on Windows that you really can't find an OS X equivalent for, then this will do wonders for you. So before this video gets any longer, thanks for watching.